Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video I'm going to talk about population genetics and how to apply Hardy-Weinberg formula and what is most important, how to interpret uh, information that we are going to get, how to compare the data that is were observed with uh, data that were predicted by the formula. And here's a problem. The biologist Bataglia raised the marine copepod Tisbe reticulata, a small free swimming marine crustacean under crowded condition. T. reticulata has one gene with two alleles, and one would be VV and another one would be VM, showing incomplete dominance in one of these tanks of his tanks. Bataglia counted 1751 copper pots and uh, Genotypes were as follows. So here is the three genotypes. One is uh, homozygous, one is heterozygous, and another one also homozygous. And here is the two questions. Question A shows that the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And here is a formula for Hardy-Weinberg. F stands for the frequencies of the genotypes and we have uh, two alleles and these two alleles can make three genotypes. One would be homozygous, another one heterozygous and the third one also would be uh, homozygous. And if we combine all these genotypes we are going to get one and one equals to 100 percent and uh, we also may say that uh, all three genotypes combined equal to 100 percent and now we have to find frequency of each genotype we are given absolute numbers and this is not frequency so we have to convert to frequencies and also i want to uh, remind you what is the incomplete dominance and incomplete dominance would be a situation when one allele, dominant allele, would be incompletely dominant over the recessive allele. What does it mean? Imagine that capital A stands for the red color and small a stands for the uh, white color. So when we have a heterozygous genotype, this wouldn't be red as in simple Mendelian genetics. It's going to be, for example, if it is uh, color of the uh, flower of the plant, this is going to be intermediate or it's going to be pink. So when we have two parents who is going to be heterozygous or going to be pink and when we cross them we can get uh, progeny genotypes as follows. So here we would have capital A, capital A, capital A and small a here, capital A and small a here, and small a, small a here. And as you see, uh, where we have two dominant alleles, or capital A, capital A, we would have plants with red flowers, and two out of four would be the same genotype as parental genotype, and they would produce phenotypically um, intermediate color between red and white, so going to be pink, and one quarter uh, of the plants would have white flowers. So as you see, when we have incomplete dominance, we can easily tell homozygous uh, dominant genotype, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive, because all the three um, genotypes would make three phenotypes. And here we also see that when scientists observe this three genotypes he can easily can tell which genotype is because here in incomplete dominance uh, genotypes means uh, phenotype so let me clean this space so in our formula p squared stands for the homozygous uh, dominant genotype for example this is can be homozygous dominant genotype so we have here uh, 300 53 individuals that belong to this genotype and we have 1,000 
69, that is heterozygous, and as you see, one of the alleles would be V, another would be M. So this is going to be heterozygous, and number is 1069. And we also have another genotype, that is MM, and we have 329 individuals. And this is not frequencies, this is absolute numbers. So we need to find frequencies. So how we are going to find it? We have to divide, uh, for example, this number by, by the total number of individuals. And here is the total number of individuals. So if we combine all these three numbers, this is going to be total. So in order to find frequency of this genotype, we have to divide 353 by 1751. So 353 divided by 1751 would be 0 0.2. I'm rounding numbers. And frequency of the heterozygous genotype, that is uh, VM, we also have to divide um, 1069 by 1751, total number of individuals, and the answer would be 0 0.61. Once again, I am rounding numbers. And the frequency of the homozygous uh, recessive genotype uh, is as follows. So we have to divide 329 by 1751. And the answer would be 0 0.19. Once again, here is absolute numbers and underneath let's write frequencies. So frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype would be 0 0.2. Frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be 0 0.61. And frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype would be 0 0.19. Now we can check uh, we have to add all these numbers and we are going to get 1. And this is exactly what we are going to get if we will combine all these numbers. So this is our frequencies. And we call this observed uh, frequencies. So observe frequencies. Now we can uh, use Hardy-Weinberg formula in order to find uh, predicted frequencies by this formula. So, uh, in order to find uh, predicted frequencies, we need to know P and Q. So, we need to know the frequency of the allele P and allele Q. As you remember, we have uh, only two alleles here. In formula, it is P and Q, but in our example, two alleles would be V and M. So I would use uh, the same uh, letters in, as in formula, but you should understand that P here stands for the V, so all the alleles P in the gene pool plus all the alleles Q in the gene pool, if we combine them, would equal to 1. And 1, as you remember, equal to 100%. And P stands for the allele V, and Q stands for the allele M. So, uh, here we have two alleles, M, M, here we have uh, V and M allele, and here we have two alleles, that is V and V. If we multiply allele V by itself, we are going to get V squared, or P squared in our formula. If we multiply frequency of the allele M by itself, and why we have to multiply? Because uh, organisms are deployed. And some of them would be homozygous recessive, some of them would be heterozygous, and some of them would be homozygous dominant. So that's why we have to multiply M by itself in order to...
to find the frequency of the homozygous recessive uh, genotype. So, as you see, for our formula, we need to know frequencies of each allele, allele P and allele Q. How we are going to solve this? This is very easy. As you see, heterozygous genotype consists of two alleles, P and Q. So that means that uh, half of this number would be allele P and half of this number would be allele Q. So we have to add half of this number here and half of this number here. So frequency of the allele P would be 0 0.2 plus 0 0.305. And the answer would be 0 0.505, and this is frequency of the allele P, and uh, the frequency of the allele Q would be 1 minus P, we, this is how we can find Q, or we just can combine these numbers, half of this number plus this number, and frequency of the little q would be 0 0.495. One more time, uh, this line stands for the frequencies that is observed, and now we are going to use the formula and apply these numbers in order to find uh, frequencies that is predicted by Hardy-Weinberg formula. So, for p squared, we have to multiply number p by itself. So we have to multiply 0 0.505 by itself. And the answer would be 0 0.26 and this would be predicted. And number of heterozygous would be 2 multiplied by number p and by number q. So we have to multiply these two numbers and multiply by 2. So uh, 0 0.505 multiplied by 0 0.495 would be 0 0.25 and multiplied by 2. The answer would be 0 0.5. And uh, as you see, when we add these three numbers, we are going to get 1. So q squared would equal to 0 0.24. But also we can get the same number if we multiply 0 0.495 by itself. And this is going to be a rounded number. And if we combine all these numbers, we are going to get 1 or 100%. And as you see, our observed frequencies are different from our frequencies that is uh, predicted by the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So, as you see, here we have 0 0.2 and here we have 0 0.26. So, predicted numbers is by 20% is higher. And here we have uh, observed number frequency that is 0 0.61 and predicted would be 0 0.5. So we see that heterozygous uh, genotype is present in higher quantities than predicted and homozygous recessive genotype is present in lower quantity or frequency than predicted. So we gave an answer to question A, shows that the population is not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and our data here clearly shows that uh, this population is in not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and um, question B discuss why it might not be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and as you see observed numbers of the heterozygotes is higher than predicted by the formula and the reason can be sortative mating so homozygous dominant prefer 
mating with homozygous recessive. That's why we have higher number of uh, heterozygotes here. And also, uh, the reason can be that uh, we have higher number of the heterozygotes than predicted by the formula, because uh, those individuals that is heterozygous are more fit and produce a higher number of the progeny. And generation after generation, number of the heterozygotes would increase. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.